I'm Dr. Rick Green, and it's my absolute pleasure to host this latest in our edition of uh, interviewing past COC chairs for our 100th anniversary of the Commission on Cancer. And today, it is my absolute joy to be talking with a colleague and a friend that I haven't seen for a long time, COC past chair Scott Hundle. Scott, welcome. Oh, Rick, thanks for having me. It's so great to see you again. We haven't touched base in, uh, boy, years. Right, right. So you were, you were chair in 1998 to 2000. And I guess I want you to remind me how you got involved in the commission. Uh, well, let's see. You know, I'd uh, uh, trained at Sloan Kettering uh, uh, with, uh, oh boy, uh, Elliot Strong, and Jaden Shaw, and uh, uh, Dan Quiet, Bryant. Murray Brand, yeah, you know, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, I saw that the uh, college, specifically the Commission on Cancer, uh, was uh, sponsoring cancer management courses around the country, and I wanted to compare uh, what I had uh, learned during my fellowship with what was being taught uh, uh, by the college. And uh, I went to an absolutely delightful cancer management course in uh, Macon, Georgia, I think. And there I ran across uh, one of my great all time friends, uh, 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 Al Watney, who I'm sure you remember. Uh, and uh, uh, I just got interested, and uh, uh, I was active in the American Cancer Society, and uh, either through that route or perhaps through uh, uh, the folks at that cancer management uh, course, uh, I got invited to volunteer for some commission work, and the rest is history. Right. Well, you know, and as many of us got involved uh, in the COC, uh, what was the area that intrigued you most of the different committees and the different things the commission did? Uh, well, of course, uh, uh, it was the early days of the National Cancer Database, and uh, that was just a fabulous uh, project. Uh, the other thing that I really liked, and uh, it's something that attracted me to the Cancer Society as well. A uh, uh, group of people with just a shared, wonderful sense of volunteerism. Exactly. Trying to make things better. Yeah. And of course, uh, you know, I, I, we, I'm sure you agree with me that one of the shining stars of our COC and the cancer programs is the NCDB and uh, the relationship that grew out of the American Cancer Society and the commission. Um, and, you know, there, there were a lot of interesting things that happened uh, during your tenure as COC. Uh, and I, for instance, the member organization uh, group uh, was, you know, sort of a loose group, but I think under your leadership and during your COC chairmanship, actually they had their first meeting, they came together. And I, I wanna ask you, talk a little about the, uh, the commission in terms of organizations. What do these other organizations bring to us as a, as a commission? Well, particularly in those days, they bring a uh, perspective beyond uh, what we see through the Cancer Society and what we see through our, uh, sometimes narrow viewpoint uh, as uh, surgeons. And uh, uh, I, for one, appreciated that. Learning about the registry community, learning about cancer registration, learning about uh, the uh, uh, community cancer centers, uh, uh, it, it was really fine. And you know, when I was there uh, on the commission, I think we had about 40 uh, member organizations. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, numbers currently about 56, and you were responsible for uh, a good bit of that growth. Um, uh, 
Yeah, well, the, uh, I, I think certainly, as, as you well know, uh, new organizations have developed, they get identified as having a real importance for the commission. And, uh, you know, they, they brought a lot of things. I, I always, when I survey, I always tell hospitals, because I still survey, you know, I'm a site visitor, uh, that this is not the American College of Surgeons coming and telling you how to run your cancer program. This is a commission made up of all of these organizations. And I think uh, you'd agree that's the strength of the commission. Yes, ab absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we've, we've got to uh, uh, at least mention Jerry Murphy during this call. Uh, Jerry died uh, in 2000. Uh, he was uh, in Tel Aviv uh, doing something for the UICC. He was uh, secretary general of that organization for, uh, wow, over 25 years, I think 26 years. Right. And uh, he was a giant. Actually, you know, our international outreach programs uh, started in the mid uh, to late 90s, largely with Jerry's help. Uh, we had, uh, of course, uh, the uh, thyroid cancer PCE uh, of uh, 1996, uh, and uh, I, I had the honor to uh, lead that group. Uh, it included uh, uh, Dr. Mazaferi, Blake Katie, Jayton Shaw, uh, and uh, we were approached by some German investigators, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, well, Holzer and Dudek. Uh, and uh, basically we sort of did uh, parallel studies with uh, several of the uh, 1996 thyroid PCE data elements shared by a national German study. Uh, and then in Orlando in 1998, uh, we got together and compared results. And then uh, in 2000, after the Germans finally, uh, uh, they spent a long time wordsmithing their uh, article, but uh, we published parallel uh, articles in Cancer. And uh, Blake, uh, Katie was uh, uh, very kind and wrote a, uh, a nice uh, sort of, uh, uh, review editorial for that issue. And I've got to say that Blake accurately predicted uh, all the results, uh, both in Germany and in the US. I was very impressed. <laughs> well, over the years, you were a, a great contributor to the literature using the NCDB data and uh, many of the papers. And by the way, I will tell you that one of the parts of our celebration of the 100th uh, year of the COC is to uh, highlight some of the wonderful manuscripts that came out of the NCDB. And certainly some of those are, uh, are penned by you. So I just wanted to let you know that. Ah, very kind. Yeah, I thought it was, uh, you know, it, in those days uh, it was uh, sort of dismissed as a convenience sample by the uh, population-based uh, uh, folks, but uh, boy, it was a really big convenient sample. And uh, it proved to be a wonderful tool for investigating, uh, well, uh, uh, the, the, the whack I took at it was uh, uh, using it to look at uh, kind of rare and unusual cancers. Parathyroid cancer was uh, uh, something that was worth study. And, you know, thyroid cancer too was uh, uh, not that common. And we put together uh, one paper that uh, uh, identified and tracked 53,000 thyroid cancer cases in the US. Uh, it, it was uh, a very big data set and some interesting things came out of it. Exactly. You know, there are 37 million cases now in the NCDB. Wow. And, uh, you know, certainly in our staging work, we've used the NCDB data and uh, you and your colleagues have contributed to that. You know, Scott, I, I have to ask you because I, and, one and of Rick, the most, 
Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, but before we leave Jerry Murphy and the international thing. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, several on the commission, myself included, helped him with uh, UICC projects. Uh, one uh, uh, had to do with setting up uh, cancer registries in the Gulf states. Uh, the only uh, cancer registry, functional cancer registry uh, uh, in that area of the world, and it's an interesting area, uh, was in Kuwait. And uh, the Iraqis uh, destroyed it during the first Gulf War. Uh, and uh, the UICC working with the Norwegian uh, cancer uh, 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 organization and uh, the uh, Saudi government uh, basically put together a symposium and uh, we ended up uh, publishing a paper on that. Uh, I think it was a 97 symposium and it got published in 98. And uh, our own Rosemary Clive uh, was one of the authors and uh, Dr. Bedwani and Ian Thompson. Uh, and uh, uh, they may have included me on the thing, but my initial draft of that report was just really rough. Uh, uh, and then, and then we, we also uh, supported uh, setting up cancer registries in the East Zone. Uh, uh, Chernobyl was in 1986, and uh, people were interested in uh, uh, thyroid cancer in particular, and, and uh, really there were uh, very few good functioning registries uh, in that area. And, uh, again, the Norwegians and the UICC uh, were uh, trying to remedy that. And uh, uh, we at the college, uh, 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 Chuck Hoover, uh, myself, uh, others uh, spent some time in uh, uh, Hungary for one meeting and uh, the UICC was based in Geneva. So I think we, we all trolled through Geneva at least uh, once. Uh, and that was that was fun. And you mentioned uh, 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 somewhere that uh, the international outreach uh, was continuing. I, I have observed that with Jerry's death in 2000, we lost a lot of momentum. Well, you know, you bring up uh, uh, really important issues because the the, the global in, influence uh, of the commission. Uh, is important and, and certainly the work with Jerry and the UICC and also the international management course. As you remember, the management course started as a domestic program yeah. and then went internationally, uh, which was important. And so uh, those are great, great remembrances. But I, I, I have to mention one thing. Uh, you were living in Honolulu yes. when you were commission chair. It was very difficult. <laughs> you spent a lot of times on airplanes. And I just wanted to ask you, because it always amazed me, the dedication that you had and the travel that you did to support the college. And I, I just want you to comment on that. How, how, how did you get through that? Uh, well, um, uh, the jet lag was difficult. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was in private practice. And uh, when I went away for a commission function or something, uh, uh, it was all day basically uh, getting there. By the time the meetings were over, uh, uh, I couldn't get a flight back. And so it was a second day. And then uh, when I finally got back to Honolulu, uh, I had to cover the practice of the people who were covering me. And uh, it was sort of a, a, a burnout prep, but in those days I was young and indestructible and <laughs> it worked. Well, you talk about travel uh, and getting back to Jerry Murphy. Holy cow, that man just lived on airplanes. Absolutely. Well, it shows your dedication. So I, I have to ask you, you're living in Sacramento, California right now. Tell me what you're doing. What, what, what's life like? Uh, well, I'm so happy we're sort of gradually emerging from lockdown. We're still wearing masks, of course. And uh, I do hope you've gotten your COVID vaccination. 
Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I have too. Uh, my mother uh, is living on the East Coast, 87 years old and uh, uh, a little fragile around the uh, edges, but still uh, doing fine. I'm getting ready to get set to uh, spend considerable time with her this summer. Uh, and uh, uh, you'll enjoy this. You're an ex-Navy man. Uh, uh, I'm uh, taking delivery of a, a Rustler 33 uh, sailboat. Uh, and uh, uh, it's a sort of a weekender cruiser, day sailor type uh, thing. It's made in uh, uh, Falmouth, England. And uh, it'll get delivered in June. And I'm Looking forward to sailing it. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And health is 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 all important. And you look very very healthy. Yeah, you do too. And we're, uh, we're well preserved, Rick. <laughs> right. So, Scott, before we uh, close our interview, I want to give you an opportunity to have any final words, uh, things that I didn't ask about the commission, memories that you wanted to share, anything uh, before we close. Uh. Yeah, uh, the, uh, uh, one of the uh, things accomplished during my tenure as uh, chair, uh, we crafted a mission statement for the uh, Commission on Cancer. Uh, there was a lot of uh, interest in uh, cancer data, cancer quality, quality of cancer care. Of course, uh, the commission had been doing that for several years, but outside of our uh, a little group of colleagues uh, and uh, people in member organizations. In those days, a lot of people didn't know about the uh, commission. We figured that crafting a mission statement uh, would uh, help us get the word out. Uh, what we came up with uh, is uh, uh, something that's kind of similar to what we have now, a, a consortium of prof professional organizations dedicated to uh, reducing morbidity and mortality of cancer through education standard setting and monitoring uh, of uh, quality care. And uh, uh, within a few years that got morphed to something that was uh, uh, a little more positive and uh, understandable by the uh, lay public, uh, uh, namely an organization dedicated to improving survival and quality of life, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I think uh, that helped us get the word out. It wasn't uh, easy to do that. And it was a little controversial uh, coming up with uh, uh, something, but uh, uh, eventually people thought it had value. And within a, a year or two after that, the, the regents decided that uh, the college needed a mission statement uh, as well. Uh, as, as you uh, reflect, uh, we all have our favorites uh, in the uh, commission. Uh, and since this is sort of a, a, a reminiscence, uh, uh, when I first uh, made it to the uh, uh, college headquarters and, and got a chance to walk around, the buildings were still on East Erie Street. And uh, uh, oh boy, you know, meeting Paul Ebert uh, uh, face to face and and uh, uh, of course, Rollo Han Hanlon was uh, uh, just, you know, dedicated and uh, omnipresent. Uh, and uh, it was wonderful uh, uh, meeting them face to face and uh, they were uh, so kind. And then uh, our, our own staff, Rosemary uh, Clive and uh, Herman Mank, uh, and uh, uh, Andrew Stewart, uh, uh, David, of course. Uh, it, it just, uh, it, it really brings back good memories. Well, you've said it so well. It really is uh, the commission and our activities are one thing, but it's all those wonderful people we've met along the way. And Scott, I just wanna thank you for your co contributions to the Commission on Cancer because really, your two years as a COC chair really were, was a very small reflection of the years that you spent supporting the commission. And I wanna thank you for all of your leadership and your dedication. 
And I want to thank you for being on this uh, commemorative video interview today as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the commission. Thanks, Rick. Have a great day. Hey, you too.